JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab created or earth created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict free stones. Then you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real time diamond consultations available where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. You've discovered your link to gopowercat.com's PowerCat podcast. Now, here's your host, gopowercat.com publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Welcome to an edition of the PowerCat Questions podcast that you may never forget, or you could forget it quickly. I don't know, I'd like to forget what I saw on my television screen last night. Oh, so much to discuss. Tim Fitzgerald, Ryan Gills Gilbert, and Zach Carlson. I feel like you used to have a nickname in the middle there. Zachtoberfest Carlson, even though it's now December. Your trio of entertainers. And this one's going to be interesting. In case you missed it, I hope you didn't. Kansas State lost to Fort Hayes State Tuesday night in basketball. Fort Hayes State. In K-State's defense, it is the premier team in all of western Kansas. And Kansas State scheduled it on short notice and then didn't share that notice with its players that this was a real game. We're sponsored by The Fridge. If you need to drink after what you witnessed on Tuesday night, go to the fridge, even if you're out of town. You want to get that Manhattan booze to soothe your frayed nerves from Kansas State basketball. Guys, I haven't pre-planned. I haven't thought about what I'm going to say. I've got a lot I think I want to say. I'm angry. I'm laughing because it's so bad. And... Yet, I've got a lot of other thoughts that, I mean, this is exactly what Bruce Weber was granted by his bosses this season to completely rebuild from the ground up a program he has coached for eight years. Year nine becomes a complete rebuild of the program. He was afforded that opportunity, and this is what we're having right now is a complete ground rebuild to wherever it's going. And if you hear his supporters, it'll surely end with another Big 12 title, which usually means a first-round exit from the NCAA tournament. Uh, Guys, how are the questions? Are the questions... um, I don't even know what the word I want to use. Brutal? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd call them brutal, but... We'll have a good podcast. Well, that's a promise I don't want to say that we'll fulfill for sure. I don't want those standards. Those standards are way too high for me. Good. Gills, how are you doing this morning? Uh, you don't have classes. Uh, are finals over? I've still got a few left, but uh, uh, they're, I'm pretty much done. So all, I'm well. I'm well. All remote, though, right? Yep. yep. You wisely stayed in town. Good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to enjoy it while, I'm, while I can. We're, we're plotting some things that include the use of the new studio here at home. We'll hopefully make announcements about that later. But it'll involve me hiding from my employees in my own home. Huh. Uh, our segment sponsors are Tanners and the High Low. Make sure you stop in those places when you're in town. If you ever come back, maybe you'll hide in shame at home for the rest of the sports season. I'm not sure. Well, guys, let me just start here. Um, I had a bad feeling about last night. I mean, I posted on Wabash Station that surely they won't lose this game. Surely, right? I mean, there's no way. They can go out and half-ass it and win this game, right? Well, one, uh, Fort Hayes State proved that they've got a much higher gear to play at than they had shown this year. I mean, maybe... Fort A State is a lot better than everyone thinks because they, I mean, even if you're unguarded to hit that number of threes at timely threes, 
says something about you as a team. I mean, it was impressive. They passed the ball well. They moved the ball well. Basically, K-State afforded them the opportunity to have a feel-good game, and they feel really good, and they should. But the problem here was K-State didn't even play at half-ass. I wouldn't even say it was quarter-ass. And that's really, it's not the defeat I'm upset about. I can handle a loss if you if you bust your butt. Now, even against Fort A State, that might be a stretch. But they didn't look like they gave a about what was happening to them on the basketball court last night. They had no dignity, no pride, no effort. Mike McGurl tried as best he could, and the rest of the team, I don't even know what they were doing. Dejuan Gordon, quit shooting three-pointers. Please, just stop. Just stop. If forced to do so, take it. And here's an underlying issue that I have with Bruce Weber teams, good and bad. Roles are never fully defined. This is what you do. You don't do this unless we have no other choice. The fact that Gordon has the light for three pointers like he apparently does. I I don't I don't understand. And the fact that he's allowed to chunk up four I think it was four in the first half that don't have a chance of going in and allowed to play and never sat down and said, you know what, let's talk about your shooting. This hangs on everyone associated with K State basketball. Everyone. Yeah, he's won two Big Twelve titles, and those are great. But then both of those seasons, they've exited in the first round of the NCAA tournament. So that's essentially like getting A's on your exams and flunking the final. Because what do K-State fans really talk about? What do any fan talk about when they're discussing their team? How they do in the NCAA tournament. Now, it'd be nice to be afforded the opportunity to discuss both, but you're really not. K-State fans fall back on the two titles when they need to, but mostly they want to talk about that Elite Eight, and for good reason. That's what it's about in college basketball. You can be national champion without being your conference champion. And not once have I heard a team in that predicament have thrown back at them, oh, yeah, you're national champs, but you didn't win your conference. Nobody ever says that. Nobody says that because it's what you do in the tournament that counts. And this program under Bruce Weber has done something in the tournament once. Every other time it's made the field, it's left after the first game. Well, there was the play-in game. The games that should exist. And remember, that Elite Eight was completely circumstantial. If Virginia just takes care of business and doesn't become the first one to lose in the first round, it's over. Well, I I understand that, and I could put that asterisk on it, but that's the NCAA tournament. You know what I – Yeah, yeah. I I remember a time that Kansas made it all the way to the Final Four playing all double-digit seeds. I mean, that's a benefit of being a one, but, uh, I mean, that – could have happened for K-State because as an eight or nine, which they were that year that they beat Creighton, they're essentially taking over the one role in that bracket, if that makes sense, because they got to play the 16. Uh, You know, that happens in the NCAA tournament, and it happened in K-State's favor for really the first time that they got a break, but then they had to go beat Kentucky. You know, that was legitimate. They they played their butts off. They played like the fans expect K-State basketball to play. Inspired, focused, fighting, able to overcome that they were supposed to lose. K-Staters expect that from their sports teams. Uh, I mean, maybe it's the culture. Maybe it's just the reality that K-State will never have a program that just gets better players than everyone else and thus should win. I mean, that's easy. It's easy to be a fan of Oklahoma. They get better players. But when you're Kansas State or you're Iowa State, you get the best possible players you can and expect them to fight their butt off for you. 
for the colors, for the fans, for themselves. So to watch a team so disinterested in competing is foreign to me. It's it's weird. I don't remember taking the field in rec softball, volleyball, basketball, and ever going through the motions like a group of scholarship basketball players did last night at Brahma's Coliseum. I mean, if you're a competitor, if you're really a competitor, I don't care if it's your given sport or you're playing Uno, for God's sakes, with the, the family kids over the holidays. You want to win, man. Yeah, you just got There's Competitors want to win. They want to fight. They want to win. They want to battle. They want to win. There was none of that on display. No focus, no definition. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know who they were. And they didn't give up. I don't want to say it again. Now, it sounds like I'm blaming the kids. But I'm I'm really not. This does lie squarely at the feet of Bruce Weber and his coaching staff. Again, this is a team of their selection and of their doing. A meteor didn't hit the house and burn it down. They burned it down with faulty electrical work. The team wasn't wired right, and now the program's been burned down again, and they got to restart. This is the second restart in the nine-year period. Um... And this one looks like it's going to take even longer. I'm not going to sit here today and call for Bruce Weber's firing. I've been there. I've done that. It's been made very clear to me by the administration and enough of the fan base that this result is okay. It's okay. This is part of the process. Trust that process. Mm, I, this is not a part of a normal process, people. I understand the ebbs and flows of college recruiting and a lot of programs that lie below, you know, the national stature, those programs that just reload. I understand programs dip and rise, but not like this. Let's talk about that Elite Eight. K-State won a first-round game, a true First round game, not a playing game, against a worthy opponent. One of the better opponents K State's played in the first round, ironically, and they won that game. Creighton. Creighton had some really good players, including Marcus Foster. K State overcame that with Mike McGurl as a freshman playing an incredible role in it. Funny how these things come full circle. Now, three years later, Mike McGurl's the senior, leading a bunch of Young, unproven players doing his best, and I appreciate it, Mike. I, I really do. You've been put in a role uh, that nobody would want, and you sat down in front of the media to discuss the game last night. That's that's big time. Oh, by the way, Creighton is ranked in the top ten and played Kansas to the wire at Allen Fieldhouse yesterday. I missed their dip, apparently, their their fall into oblivion. That is inevitable, from what I'm told, for programs such as Kansas State and Creighton. Uh, no, I'm not going to bring up that other coach. That ship has sailed. Uh, he's doing ex- extremely well at his new institution. There's no going back and redoing it. And I think you know who I'm talking about. But nice win over Duke. Uh, yeah, at, at Duke. K-State lost at home to Fort Hayes State. And Zach and I were discussing the irony of all this is that it was an exhibition game for Fort Hayes State. <laughs> this one counted on the record for K-State, but if you're looking for good news, it doesn't count on their postseason resume. 
No, if you're looking for good news, he transferred a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and another former K-State player that has gone on to greatness at another program. But where is he? I don't even know. I have no clue. I just know he popped up on a TikTok of uh, this year's all NCAA name team. So, yeah. That's what he's got going for him. I see glimmers of hope on this team. I see some players with some raw talent. I mean, we we can all agree Nigel Pack is special. It wasn't particularly great last night, but you can't expect that from a freshman point guard. But there's serious game there. And I see glimpses of other things from other players. But, boy, they got a lot of progress to make. And I'm willing to be patient with it because I'm told that's what's going to have to take place. And, really, there's no other alternative right now. The season started. No, you're not going to fire a coach in season this year. You're not. That, that's not what K-State's going to do. What's that solve? That leaves you one coach short. That didn't, that didn't help you at all. I, yeah, I'm just uh, bewildered, not by the lack of talent. Because there is some. I'm bewildered by the lack of give a hell, give a damn to play. And maybe it's because they've been locked up. They haven't had the normal community college experience. I didn't mean community college. I mean in the community at a college town experience. Maybe they just don't feel that they're part of a family, part of a a larger team than what's in their locker room. They don't see the fans. They don't see friends very often. They just play basketball. There were some really, really troubling quotes from Bruce Weber after the game. Um, I, I'll cover those later. I think I'm going to cover those in a daily delivery. But he pretty much admitted he already has lost this locker room. He's already got guys doing their own thing and not listening to the coaching staff. That's the underlying genetic disorder that Bruce Weber teams have. The locker room has to be self-contained. Someone in that locker room has to be such an alpha a Barry Brown or a Rodney Magruder that everyone around them listens. And I'm sure Mike's trying, but maybe that's not in his nature. And his game doesn't scream alpha leader. He's good. He's a nice piece to come off the bench for a Big 12 team. Not be your star, not be your leader, and not even be a starter. A nice piece to have. But this team's like a bunch of pieces that don't seem to fit together. So we'll see. Bruce Weber needs that guy in the locker room to tell people to shut the hell up and get back to work. And Barry Brown, bless his heart, was that guy. He was a man in that locker room. And every great Bruce Weber team has had that guy. Now, I understand and recognize that most great teams do. But great coaches know how to make leaders. That was one of the things Bill Snyder did really well. He kind of crafted leaders. But that doesn't seem to happen with Bruce Weber teams. Leaders have to emerge. They have to take control. They have to overcome and be that guy. It's not, hap- it's not happening with this team. Nor do I fully expect it with being so young, but the fact they're talking about guys are distracted. There's a bunch of BS. You know, you can go through the list of things that they hinted at. All is not well. The best quote from Bruce Weber so far this year was this. It wasn't his apology last night. It wasn't uh, talking about being humbled. None of that. Uh, While reminding us that he's won two Big 12 titles. Flash the rings. Flash the rings. We lost four days. Flash the rings. Um, it was earlier this year when he said, in practice sometimes I turn to the coaches 
and ask, was that really good offense or bad defense? Shouldn't you know? Shouldn't you be able to tell? I mean, you're not you're not a coach coaching his first game ever as a head coach. Oh, that's what Fort Hayes State had last night. Odd. Let's get to some questions from Wabash Station. Here's Gills. Well, we can skip the first question, Gills, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, first question was WTF. I think we already got that settled. Uh, another question from Kanad. These are all from Kanad here in the first half. Uh, how 2020 is it that Fort Hayes State is still, quote-unquote, winless because they had to declare the game an exhibition to avoid playing too many games? That's funny. That, it is. It is. Uh, the MIAA, an outstanding Division II conference. It just is. I mean, particularly in football, but basketball's really picked up too. There's no doubt about it. They're only playing league games. Somehow the MIAA grew to like 14 teams. I don't, I don't know when that happened. <clears throat> I saw Newman's in it now. Not the guy from Seinfeld, but the school in Wichita. Um, that's Fort A. State's next opponent, Newman. It used to be Kansas Newman. Now it's just Newman. I thought like the better is Kansas Newman. Um, but yeah, they're playing. 22 conference games this season. And that's their whole schedule. You can play 22 games, Division Two this year. So K-State had to be an exhibition, but it counts for K-State. It's, it's classic. Next question from KNED. How embarrassed is UMKC right now? <laughs> uh, and UMKC was better than Fort Hayes. Now, Fort Hayes just hit the head. Crap out of three pointers. They're 10 to 24 or whatever. It wasn't just a number, though. It was timing. Every time K State would kind of get a little push going, there's a three. And it wasn't like it was a tough three, usually. It was usually uh, a wide open three because the defense was so bad. But yeah, uh, let's hope Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Bruce's hometown team, is as bad as you and KC. I. I don't know how embarrassed UMKC is, or I guess they're Kansas City now, but I left it as UMKC in the questions because that's what everybody wants to call them, I guess. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know how you can be UMKC and lose to K-State and be, I guess, embarrassed that they lost to someone that's not even in your own division. I mean, at least you're not them, and at least you've won other games. Have they? I don't even know if UMKC has won other games. Uh, I know that they lost to Southeast Missouri State. The, the fighting Brad Corns. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. There's, there's nothing. There's little more to say than what Fitz said, I guess, about everything. <laughs> so we might as well just move on to the next, next question. One. Last question of the first half is another one from KNED. Where does K-State rank in the state of Kansas? Uh, well, Washburn beat Fort Hayes State. That's troubling. Uh, I don't know about Pitt State this year or Emporia State or Newman. Oh, Kansas Wesleyan's pretty good. They're typically pretty good. That's in Man, that you're going you're division. going down a you're going down a division. I'm going down two divisions, isn't that NAI Division Two? I don't know. I don't oh, even know. My God. My God. Uh, At the very least, they are easily the worst team that plays Division One basketball regularly in the state of Kansas. Easily. They would lose 10 out of 10 games to Wichita State. Oh, uh, man. I want to I fight you on that, but I can't. Wichita State's not very good right now with an interim coach and a depleted roster. And I don't, I don't know. There's, there's got to be a middle ground between a coach who is angry and yells a lot and uh, demeans his players and Bruce Weber, who is literally one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. But as someone who knows basketball quite well texted me last night at halftime, we're going to find out 
how much this team fears its coaching staff. If you ever played sports, you understand that. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you've ever played sports, you understand that I'm not playing well, but I don't want to understand the consequences of not playing well because coach is pissed off. And they came out in the second half and looked worse. Gills, I didn't know that was possible. I didn't know they had a lower gear than what they showed in the first half, but by God, they brought it out. Yeah. I mean, when they came out of the locker room and came out for warmups, I knew that you know, we, we need to buckle in because they did not look, you know, they had no energy. They were lackadaisical. And, you know, you could see that coming from a mile away. I mean, yeah, they didn't have any, any, uh, any drive in them at all. I wish I looked up the kid's name. Uh, I I would like to give a shout out to the post guy that weighed about three hundred pounds, <laughs> or the shot putter, whatever he was. He was good. The, the thing I noticed about Hayes is they've kind of played within their skill set. Again, guys knew their roles. There weren't guys stepping out to shoot three pointers that didn't know how to shoot them. The guys that took them know how to make a three pointer. Other guys are slashing and pressing and stealing and and Chubbs, my buddy. The big guy, he's banging around, getting rebounds, getting follow shots, playing a role on a greater thing called a team. K-State should try that. It generally works. That's the first half of the Powercat Questions podcast, sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. We'll be back on the other side. Maybe with something positive. But I doubt it. The PowerCat Podcast will be right back. Selling a little or a lot? <coughs> Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast all lowercase go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash odyssey podcast getting the crew together isn't as easy as it used to be we get it life comes at you fast but trust us your pals are desperate for a good hang and when they hear you stock the party with drinks from drizzly they'll be banging down your door let Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery, take care of the supplies. All you need is an excuse. It doesn't even have to be a good one. It's your dog's birthday. The loquats are finally ripe. Whatever. With Drizzly, you can compare prices on a massive selection of beer, wine, and spirits and get them delivered straight to your door, which means you can entice the crew to leave their houses without ever leaving yours. Whatever the occasion, download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. We now send it back to the PowerCat podcast. Welcome back to the PowerCat Questions podcast, sponsored by Fridge Wholesale Liquor. Tim Fitzgerald, Zach Carlson, Ryan Gilbert. There's a lot of me. Wow, a lot of me. Man, I'm a... I just had some free-flowing thoughts. When you're having free-flowing thoughts, head to the fridge. Get some free-flowing refreshments. And stop in Tanner's and the Hilo when you're in town. Guys, we're going to do a second half now. And by God, 
It's going to be good. We're going to perform in the second half. We're okay in the first half. We're going to come out here in the second half and be so much better than we were in the first half. It's going to stun people. Maybe if it's let us participate instead of taking the mic, hogging it. Uh-huh. This is how you lose a locker room right there. Here's Gills. First question of the second half from Wildcat Pilot 88. I thought playing sports was a good thing for morale during a pandemic. Was I wrong? Would it have been better for K-State Athletics to sit this year out so morale wouldn't crater to depths we didn't expect coming? Yeah, I'm cheering for the pandemic right now to wipe out basketball. I No. I, because if... I wasn't complaining about this right now. I'd be complaining about something pandemic related that really I have no control over. That really me complaining about this or that doesn't help. I'm not sure this helps, but it makes me feel better. I don't know. So basically well, what Pilot's saying here is I'm a man who works in his basement because he can't go outside, and I watch crappy basketball. Eh. I guess it could be worse. Well, I think it's good that they're playing games. I think the circumstances of last night's game, Tuesday night's game, you know, you have the Milwaukee game get moved a few days, you know, down the road. You have an open hole in your schedule. So what do you do? Well, this team's kind of struggling right now. Let's go find them a confidence booster, you know, a little bunny team to go beat up on. Well, guess what? You didn't beat them. It didn't work. Maybe you shouldn't have, you know, made the game. You shouldn't have scheduled the game on 48 hours notice or whatever it was just to get a game. You know, maybe you should have just had a scrimmage, played it behind closed doors, go play it in the practice facility, you know, if if this is an exhibition game for one of the teams and it counts for the other, whatever it is, just play a secret scrimmage. Play a secret scrimmage. Just d- don't air it. Don't pretend like it's a game. I don't know. The, uh, the game, when they scheduled the game on Saturday, or when, when we first heard about it possibly happening on Saturday, I was like, this seems like a terrible idea. What if you win, big whoop, it's Fort Hayes State. If you lose, you lost to Fort Hayes State. I, with a team that's been as bad as they've been this year, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go and go out and schedule anybody extra. If you think you can't beat them, and if they're from a lower division, so part of your question, yeah, I think it would be good to just not play. Under these circumstances, don't go out and try making life miserable for you because you want your team to get a little bit of confidence. They're going to have to do it the old fashioned hard way. Whoever's whoever's on your schedule next, that's who you got to go beat. Guess what? They got Baylor coming up in a, in a few days. Oh, Lord. Get ready. Get ready. That, that UMKC game, that Kansas City game might be the only win for a while oh. once we get these couple of conference games. Oh. Get ready. Help. Because the confidence builder that they wanted to do last night didn't work. No. There's, I would not be surprised if K-State lost to Milwaukee on Friday. Hey, Zach, before we started this podcast, we were talking to Gills about one of the greatest movies ever made that he doesn't like. Um, Monty Python, Search of the Holy Grail. Um, that, too, they scheduled a contest against a rabbit. You said a bunny game. They went out. They thought they were going to just kill a bunny to get into the cave. And the bunny ended up being a killer bunny. That was Fort Hayes. It's a rabbit. And then they, like, a rabbit attacks you. Bites you in the neck. Oh, my God. I, I can't believe we're having to have this discussion. I don't even remember what the question was. Let's try Should it. we just be idle? Uh, like Maybe. God, idle be favored. Next question from Jack, Dr. J54. 
What do you think stops Bruce from having real success here? Actual reasons, please, not just he's a bad coach. He's not a bad coach. That's what's frustrating about it. He can put together teams. Uh, I go back to this. I He knows X's and O's. He doesn't know kind of the psychology of a team. And, yeah, folks, he, he yells and screams in practice once in a while, but, I mean, I don't mean this to be mean. I – when he yells and screams in that voice, it's not threatening. It's not, you know, I, you, you kind of got to have a bad guy. Maybe Chris is that, Lowry. I'm not sure, but there's something missing from the actual putting everything together. I mean, because he can coach. For whatever reason, he can't coach against his own defense, but it's another point. <laughs> but, uh, the actual kind of motivating and inspiring seems to lack. And you got to go get players. And they they hit it. I mean, they had Dean Wade come along, and he wanted to be a K-Stater, and he's really good. I mean, he's playing in the league now. But uh, honestly, when Barry Brown walked on campus, there was no way to project what Barry Brown would become. No way. He was a three-star kid. Nobody really was lining up to get him. And they got him. They got the right guy who was self-motivated enough, driven enough to make himself really good. A gym rat who wanted those around him to follow his lead. That's, that's more than recruiting a player. That's, that's recruiting a culture. But your culture shouldn't leave with the graduation of a player. You should have a culture in your program that stays in place. And that doesn't really seem to exist at Kansas State. Unless that culture is uninspired efforts in the NCAA tournament with the exception of one year. I don't know. Uh, but you're right. Bruce is a, a confusing character. A great coach and a bad coach all put together and just good enough to give fans and bosses enough to always keep him. But maybe they're getting there. I don't know. We'll we'll find out. This team, I don't think that this is his intent by any means because you want to keep it going each year. But it, it, it's almost like this is an NBA team or a pro team, you know, like the Royals. Well, it, th- this year's not going to be our year. We're going to have to accept it. But, you know, we've got a lot of guys coming up the pike. You know, they're going to be coming. And, you know, a couple of years from now, that's going to be our year. And we're going to win the league. We're going to win, you know, national championship, whatever. We're going to win the NBA title, World Series, whatever it is. Next year is always going to be our year. And, you know, it's all about building for, for one year. It's not about keeping it steady. And I think that that's, that's kind of – I know that recently this really hasn't been an argument. But, you know, the, the longtime argument has been, you know, Frank versus Bruce. Yeah, sure, Bruce has won more Big 12 championships than Frank Martin did at K-State. But what did Frank Martin do? He maintained a certain level of success year in, year out, where there was at least hope that K-State could at some point win a a Big 12 championship, and I think he would have done it in Bruce's first year with the the talent that he had. Um, You know, and and I think that K-State wins, you know, more games in the NCAA tournament under Frank. You know, if he if he stays and probably continues some success there, but you don't have the dips that you do that Bruce had under Frank. So I I think that that's why you see that argument there. You know, would you rather have success that you know you're not going to fall below a certain level, but you may not achieve greatness? You know, you might have a smaller ceiling at least for the the Big Twelve cha- Big Twelve championship. But like Fitz said in the first half. Hey, nobody remembers if you didn't win your conference, if you win the national championship, you know, and that's, that's where the success needs to come. You need to have success in in the NCAA tournament. You can't go to San Jose or Kansas city in game one and flop against a lower seed. When you're the fourth seed, you should be beating the 13th seed. You know, it, it just, it's unacceptable to, 
to have good seat. I mean, even in good seasons where you win the big 12, big 12 championship, you can't just treat that like up. Oh, we're at our peak. And then just go flop in the first round. You know, that's a sour taste in the mouth after that season. So I, I think that's the problem is it's just wh- whether it's roster attrition, whatever, it, it feels like they try, the staff tries only once every four years. And, and it's not even that it's that they're actively trying for like, they've got years circled four years in advance. This is going to be our year where we go all in and everything up is going to be going up the hill. And it's less of a hill than it is a cliff. You hit the edge of the cliff and we're back down to where we began. And we get a circle another year on the calendar four years from now. That's what's frustrating about Bruce Weber. At least under Frank, sure, they would go 10 and 6 or you know, whatever it was under the conference at the time. And, you know, that seemed to be their ceiling for the for the conference. But guess what? They always got a buy. And they were always playing on the second day of the Big 12 tournament. You know, they were at least a four seed. They were a top four team. If you could take being a top four team every year in the, in the Big 12, would you do it? Yeah, of course you would. So, and, and, and the other side of that is, would you rather be the one seed every four years and be a nine or a ten seed in the other three? Maybe a six seed? No. That, that's why we have these discussions about Bruce. It's the, the peaks are high. Yes. It's, it's fun to, it's fun to watch when we're at the peak, when Casey gets at the peak, but nobody really cares in the valleys and at least back under Frank and Huggins and whatever, at least the level of success wasn't going to, to fall off like it does here. And we have all these question marks. At least the program was stable before Weber. And while, yes, you can go up and down, it's not as stable, even if the ceiling is higher. I'll go a little different avenue as to why Bruce isn't having success. Um, it, I mean, we've touched on it here a little bit, but just the locker room management, Bruce doesn't have that. Um, and it, it, it's not necessarily his fault because you need – the guy like Barry or Rodney to come in and be that guy. And it's his fault for not recruiting those guys though. I mean, if you look at what happened last season, a total train wreck, right. And, and no offense to Mike, because, you know, we've touched on this as well. He's a role player. He's not supposed to be in this situation at all. Um, you know, he's Mike's supposed to be a junior right now. If he didn't red shirt, um, if he didn't burn his red shirt, you know, in the middle of his freshman you know season, he'd be a junior. So, this is not necessarily on him. I think the sophomores, um, I would be most critical of them. I was watching them during, it was Antonio and Montavious during a huddle last night during a timeout, and they were on the outside of it just having a casual conversation while um, Coach was talking to the players who were on the court. I mean, if you want to be a leader, if you want to set an example for your young, your young guys, I mean, just make eye contact with Coach and nod your head. I mean, even the walk-ons, you don't need – I mean, you, you see them just looking at the coach. You got to act like you care. I mean, you talked about Dejuan. He's really taken a big step back. I'd never really understood the hype with him. Um, you know, Antonio Gordon just chilling at the top of the key and then, you know, launching up a prayer, a three pointer. It's like, <laughs> that's not going to win you many games. Um, but, but the main, to answer the, the main question with, you know, why he doesn't have success is because of the recruits that he brings in. Barry and Dean are pretty much the only exceptions. Um, And I'd say Nigel at this point as well, but I'd bet all my money that Siri um, or Selton, Davion or Luke, one of those guys is going to transfer. There's no doubt about it. There's not enough pieces of that pie to go around. Um, They're not going to be happy. So it's been an issue for quite some time with Bruce. Um, and it's, 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 you know, what happens with, with last year, you have so many people leaving, you're creating a, an even bigger issue moving forward because you have such a, a young roster and it really just kind of snowballs as it goes along. So 
it, you know, it, it is on Bruce. You know, people want to blame the players for not performing well, but <laughs> Bruce brought him here. He brought him to Manhattan to perform at a high level, and they are not doing so. So I, it, at the end of the day, it's 100% on Bruce. And I'm, and I'm a Bruce defender. I, you know, me and my dad fight all the time. He hates Bruce, and I've usually, I'm usually one to defend him a ton. But, I mean, this is just embarrassing. <laughs> just when you think it couldn't get any worse, you lose to a Division II opponent. The first, it was, I saw on ESPN, the first, uh, what was it, the first Division I school to lose to a D2 school since 2000 at home. So, speaks for itself, man. Next question from K Ned. Everyone defends Bruce on Dean, Barry, and Cam. Are they the exception or the rule when it comes to player development at K State? Kind of like I said, it's the hey, they got a good draft class that year, so to speak. You know, it's the exception. They're they're the 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 class builder. They're the four year guys where they circle the calendar. All right, this is the year we're gonna go go for it. So you know, I think Barry, Barry was the guy that took it upon himself to get himself better, become the leader. And then I think Dean and Cam, I think they were more just kind of natural talents. And I think Kamal just needed to know, you know, what his role was by the end. And, you know, he had some struggles midway through, but, you know, by senior year, you know, he knew his role and knew what he was as a member of the team. And I think Dean was, Dean was good when he was on, but he wasn't on all the time. Bruce didn't so, bring out I mean, Dean's best. Period. Yeah. Bruce did not bring out Dean's best. I have actually wondered aloud how good would Dean Wade have been if he played for Bill Self? <clears throat> He'd have played a lesser role, less minutes, still gone to the league. I think he'd be a more complete player. Now, a lot of it was his feet. I understand that. Uh, his injuries that have gone away now that he's not playing basketball on the court that he plays at K-State, interestingly <laughs> enough. But, yeah, um, I would say as we get through, everything looks more like an exception than a rule, much more. Yeah, I, I touched on it, but, I mean, you can't hang your hat on those few good recruits you had. You just can't. And, I, I mean, Cam took a back seat to Barry and Dean. You know, I mean, he was fine, but – you know, if Mike McGurl was in his same shoes as a senior and he had Barry and Dean, he'd be great. So it just goes back to, you know, Bruce's um, lack of ability, so to speak, to, to, to keep that scholarship distribution in place. Next question from Itain BB. Will Bruce Weber win his third Big 12 championship in his time at K-State? Edit. Did I just harass and pardon me, embarrass myself with this question? Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't see it. Um, because it's not just about having to get your kids ready and, you know, have a few years to get things in line. Guys have figured out their roles. The locker room's clicking, doing its own thing. Guys are focused. They know what they're supposed to do. They defend at a high level, which is the one thing Bruce and Chris teach extremely well. They didn't look like they knew how to defend Tuesday night, but okay. Um, I don't see it because it also takes some kind of great lunar alignment for Kansas State to end up being the best team in the conference that wins the title. Uh, I mean, if – let's be honest here. If they had – Dean, Barry, Cam, everyone. If you took an, an all-star team from the Bruce Weber era at Kansas State and put it on the court this season, would it win the Big 12 this season? With Baylor so good, Kansas is good again, Oklahoma State was picked for seventh, and they look good. I never saw how they came out against Earl Roberts last night, but um, I mean, when a team looks that good and they're picked for seventh, the conference is brutal. This is the worst time for this to happen, or is it the best time? I mean, would you rather have a really talented team or a good team that goes 6-12 and 12 in the Big 12 because the rest of the conference is that good, or would you like to have a team that you know sucks you-know-what and goes 0-18, maybe 2-16? 
but it 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 takes the right mix of occurrences for Bruce Weber and Case State to win the Big 12 title because they're never really the most talented team. That's when you figure out that he's a pretty good coach. When he wins a title, but they're not necessarily the best team, that, that says something about the coach. It does. But, yeah, I mean, if they were loaded this year, I don't think they'd be winning the Big 12 title. I just don't. Uh, the Big 12 is deep this year, and they're going to be deep for the next however many years. So I, 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 as much as I want to say yes, you know, but I don't, I don't think Bruce is going to be the coach in eight years or however many years it was between the, the first two, six, seven, I don't know what it was. I, I don't, like you said, Fitz, it takes the right set of circumstances, and I, I don't, it, half of it is on K-State. And right now the, the player development just isn't there that you can't point to anybody on this roster or that's coming, you know, down the pipeline of, you know, potential recruits. That's going to say, Hey, this team in four years, you know, following the cycle is going to win, going to be able to compete for a big 12 championship. I don't see that right now. And the other half of that is you're going to need the rest of the league to be, I don't want to say down, but you need to have the right circumstances there, you know, KU's going to have to be beatable. Baylor's going to have to be beatable. Texas Tech, West Virginia. This league is deep. And let's not pretend like Oklahoma State hasn't improved. You know, there's there's other teams in this league over the next four years that you're going to have trouble with. So if you expect Bruce Weber to win a championship anytime soon, I would probably table those expectations. But if he's coaching... Eight years from now, maybe he gets one. Maybe. But, you know, that, that's kind of the thing with Bruce is, do you like winning Big 12 championships? Is that what you hang, on, hang your hat on as a K-State fan when you defend Bruce? Hey, he's won us some Big 12 championship, you know, Big 12 titles. We have some trophies in our trophy case. Well, you can keep hanging your hat on those, but – at what point does he need to win another one or win some games in the NCAA tournament to extend his time here? Because, you know, the key milestones and, you know, progress markers that K-State fans like to hang their hat on when it comes to defending Bruce, you're going to need some new ones if you want to keep him around. You know, if you're not winning any game, he's not even winning games, let alone competing for championships right now. How many more years of this can you take? You know, you, for sure. You want to chalk this one up to the pandemic? Fine. But the league's still deep. The Pandemic or not, K-State was not going to compete in the Big 12 Conference in 2020 and 2021. It wasn't going to happen. So next year, what do you, you know, what do you expect? You know, if if K-State loses, you know, if they don't win more than five games this year, you know, are guys going to quit? Are guys going to leave over the summer? You know, are you going to have to rebuild again? Are the, you know, are, is K-State going to be able to get any sort of recruit? You know, they only got one signee. Are they going to be able to snag somebody, you know, get some more pieces going for the future? Because if they don't, what are we doing? So at, at some point, you've got to be honest with yourself and say, you know, if, if Big 12 championships are our key performance indicator for Bruce Weber, well, I, I don't see one happening soon. So, and if you don't see one happening soon, why, why is he here? If that's what, if that's what the performance is. But, you know, K-State fans like Fitz, you've said, you know, they're okay with six and 12 for most years. And it, it's unfortunate that that's, that's what a lot of people care. And, and people listen to this podcast, I'm not calling you out because you guys care enough. You guys understand that six and 12 is not good enough, but there's enough people in the fan base and in the administration, quite frankly, that are, are fine with this. This is okay. So, you know, and the chance of winning a Big 12 championship, you know, at some point since he's won two, that, that's what everybody's holding out for. But, but I ask, when is that going to happen? 
when is Bruce going to get another feather in his hat before he's out of feathers? You know, because at some point you got to lose these feathers. If you're just going to win, you know, you, you win your feather, you win your championship. You know, how many years does that buy you? Not a lot. Not a lot. So I, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. To answer the official question, will he win his third? No, he's not going to win a third championship at K-State. If he gets two years, ten years, he's not going to win another championship. Man, you you traveled a long way to get to that answer. <laughs> I did. Good. That's good. I don't see Bruce getting another one either. Um, it's going to take something crazy around the Big 12. Um, back in, what was that, 2019 when KU, I mean, they were just, you know, Azubuke was out for, you know, the rest of the season. I think it was in January. You know, Gerald Vick had his off-the-court issues. Um, you know, I think Marcus Garrett was banged up that year. You had a guy, um, you know, Silvio had his, his issues with the NCAA. So, I mean, if, if KU was just like, a little healthy that year they could have easily beaten kansas state and texas tech to win the big 12 title so unless something crazy happens the stars are going to really need to align for you know bruce to to get another big 12 title i don't see it happening um and also just because like you said how long is he even going to be here for so uh, it's it's a no for me dog last question of the podcast from yo mama if not Mike, who will emerge as the men's basketball team leader or leaders? Well, I I, I would have said Dejuan at one point, but now he looks pretty focused on what's good for Dejuan. I mean, not having that filter to know that you don't consistently hit three, so taking the fourth one after three misses is a bad idea. There's a level of self-awareness that you just got to have as an athlete. I mean... If I keep popping out to center, why do I keep swinging for the fence when I hit a home run every once in a while? This is silly. you got to have the self-awareness. It's got to be Nigel Pack. It's got to be, doesn't it? I don't see anyone else that has the on-court credentials to match the leadership. I mean, it's got to be. I agree. It's got to be Nigel. And hearing him in postgame, Zach and Ryan – I think you agree that the kid probably has it. The kid, you know, I don't know. Maybe he backs off around his peers, but he's assertive. He's well-spoken. He's self-aware. He's he's got those things you need to have as a leader. So maybe that will work. But you're asking a true freshman, 18, 19-year-old kid to be your leader. Do you see a theme here outside of the pandemic going on with K-State sports? If you're leaning on true freshmen to be your stars and your leaders, you got issues. And that is what is happening right now with both football and now basketball. You lean on the young guys, and the young guys aren't really ready to support the weight of it all. Gills, are you willing to step up to be the leader? If if Bruce needs some bodies, I can come in and help, man. Oh, boy. And that's a good place to end this because, folks, if you thought it could get worse, it really could. Gills could be on the team. PowerCat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com and Spirit Street Publishing. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class-leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details.